Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're asking the question, are angels real? And if they are, what do they do? And what does it have to do with us? Stick around, we're gonna get right into it. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Ted Shuttlesworth Jr. and I'm giving you truth for life. Listen, if you've not gotten our free app yet, I wanna encourage you to go to the App Store or to the Google Play Store and download it today free for your phone or your tablet. We have all kinds of resources in there that'll be a blessing to you. Also, our digital radio station that's 24 hours a day preaching and teaching, you'll find it right in the app. So today we wanna to ask the question, what is the purpose of angels? And the first verse we need to look at is found in Hebrews chapter one where the Bible says that angels are just ministering spirits that are sent out to minister on behalf of people like you and me that inherit salvation. If you're a Christian, angels have been sent forth to help you throughout your life and there's several different things that they will do in their purpose that's connected with you. First, we see that angels are sent to strengthen you in your specific purpose. Two times in the life of Jesus, we see that angels came and ministered to him. The first time we see it is when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness by the devil. And finally, when the devil left him and quit tempting him, the Bible says angels immediately came and ministered to him and strengthened and refreshed him. Secondly, when Jesus was in the garden praying and asking the Lord to let that cup of suffering, which was the crucifixion, pass from him, the Bible says angels came and they hosted him and ministered to him and they strengthened and refreshed him there. The number one purpose of angels is to strengthen believers in their purpose for God. Number two, the Bible teaches us that the second purpose of angels is to do the will or the pleasure of God on the earth. And so anywhere you can find in the word of God that God takes pleasure in doing something, then you know that his angels have been assigned to carry out that pleasure. The Bible says that God, the Lord, takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. We know that God takes pleasure in touching and healing his children. The Bible tells us that God takes pleasure in bringing deliverance to the captives. And so anywhere you can see in the word of God that God takes pleasure in something, the Bible says angels are the workers that actually fulfill that thing and get it done on the earth. The third thing that angels do is that they fight on behalf of God's people. I remember the story from 2 Kings chapter 6 where Elisha was surrounded by the enemy army in the city where he was staying. And his servant was nervous thinking that they were going to be captured and destroyed. Destroyed. But Elisha prayed and said, God, open up his eyes and let him see what I can see. And immediately the servant saw angelic armies surrounding their enemies. All throughout the Bible, we can see angels fighting on behalf of God's people. In fact, I would encourage you to do some research on the Yom Kippur War that was also called the Six Day War that took place between Israel and many Arab nations. There's testimony after testimony throughout that war where God intervened and you can clearly clearly see angelic assistance as God saved his people from destruction. The final thing we see that angels are assigned to do in the Bible is to protect the children of God. The Bible says in Psalm 91 that he will order his angels to be with you and protect you wherever you go. So the question we have to ask ourselves is how do we activate this angelic assistance? How do we get angels moving on our behalf? Well, the Bible teaches us very clearly that it is through our words in prayer that angels are activated on our behalf. In Daniel chapter 10, and when the angel arrives to speak to him, he says, your words were heard and I am here in response to your words. Again, we see in 2 Kings chapter 19 that when King Hezekiah was being threatened by an evil king that had come to destroy the nation of Israel, he took that threatening letter and laid it out before God and said, God, you can hear their threats and now I'm asking you to deliver your people. God heard King Hezekiah's words and assigned one angel, just one, to come and help him that night. And when that angel came down from heaven and began to fight, the Bible says 185,000 enemy soldiers died that night because of one angel who came to help God's people. It is our words in prayer that activate angelic assistance. I wanna encourage you to set your faith and begin to pray that angels would surround you to watch over you, to refresh you, to strengthen you, and to fight on your behalf. 
This is your inheritance as a child of God, and it should be operating in your life and in your family. Hey guys, thanks for watching again today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And listen, if you have any questions, any comments, please put them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Remember until next week that goodness and mercy are following you for the rest of your life. I love you. See you next week. Thank you